two, one, action. <laughs> Alpha. Meet Swit's latest RGBW panel innovations, the Van Gogh 70 and Van Gogh 100 LED panels. The Van Gogh series uses exclusive edge-mounted RGBW SMD LEDs, which results in an extremely thin 21 millimeter LED panel that is fanless, making zero noise on set. Time Division Drive technology makes Van Gogh up to 60% brighter than its competitors in RGB mode. You can count on extreme color accuracy with a very high CRI and TLCI. Thinner, lighter, 
brighter and quieter. These are the Van Gogh Ultra Slim RGBW panels by Swit. We are introducing the AWUE160. This is truly a groundbreaking PTZ. We have a newly developed 4K sensor, and this new sensor technology allows us the highest sensitivity within a PTZ on the market today. In addition, we're the first to introduce an optical low-pass filter built into the PTZ. What we also did with the UE160 that's so revolutionary is that we completely redesigned the mechanism in which the PTZ moves. It's much smoother and much more accurate. Hello everyone, welcome back to Pro AV. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am joined by Jim Marks from Fujifilm. Um, we were just discussing your job role, so technical sales specialist for Cine, right? Have I got that, that right? Yes, that, that, I'll, I'll go with that, Carl. That's <laughs> that, You'll rewrite the business card. <laughs> yes. No, I'll definitely go with that. Nice to see you, how are you? I'm very, very good. Thank you very much good. for joining us. How are you? Pleasure. Excellent. Top of the day. All good. Awesome. It's nice to be chatting to you with a slightly different hat on yes. now than we, because we've spoken on this channel many times over yeah. the years. Should we start with that a little bit before we start discussing the camera? Do you want me to tell you my life story? Please do. Um, three decades, Carl, <laughs> before the internet. That's when I started. No, I've, I've, I've shot with many cameras. Um, I've, I've made films, commercials. Uh, work with many brands, uh, have a really good understanding of the industry, the technology. And today we're here to talk about something very exciting from Fujifilm. Sure. 
Yeah. I mean, so I played with the original um, GFX 100 um, and the, the 50. Mm. Um, super exciting cameras, which was sort of teasingly good at video, but you sort of were going, oh, if only, if only it did this or this or this or something like that. There was a, probably a list of 50 things that you could have gone, oh, if only this was slightly better, then it could be really quite cool for video. This has come along. Yeah. And first impressions i mean i haven't played with it very long we've been playing with it just before the stream but it seems just as convenient for video effectively as fuji's super 35 cameras or you know anyone else's full frame cameras or anything like that i mean it seems to have everything you need it does i mean could this be the ultimate hybrid i know we're getting ahead of ourselves but it's a fantastic stills photography camera mm -hmm. you're absolutely right that's been continued from the previous ones but with this camera, the video focus, mm. the video tools, what it can actually do, have gone to a completely different place. Absolutely. Um, we've got this enormous new sensor. You know? I mean, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, th this is why you would end up with this camera over, you know, any of the full frame cameras from different manufacturers on the yeah. market or even Fuji's own Super 35 ones. It, it's about this sensor. It is about the sensor. I mean, I've got a few slides I could sort of yeah, run, let's, run, let's run through, through just them. to give you a, a quick idea. Um, just flick through here. I mean, I've used many different cameras for my sins over the years. <laughs> um, I've lost money on all of them, obviously, because that's what happens with cameras. Um, but hopefully I've made some money too. Uh, so I, I'm, in some senses, like many people, I'm looking for that perfect camera. You know, sure. we're looking for the camera that you can use in your projects, in all the different things you do, and you're looking for the most flexibility. Um, and what this camera does is fundamentally it gives you that bigger canvas that we spoke mm -hmm. about, that huge sensor, 1.7 times full frame, I believe. I mean, that's incredible. I think only the Alexa 65 is bigger. Yeah. And of course, that's a rental only for a little more money. And I don't think it's crazy amounts bigger. So you're sort of mm. getting towards that Alexa 65 or, you know, IMAX like kind of scale. Yeah, yes. But it's kind of the everyday version that it's an everyday version of that but it, of course of course as we go into the details of what this camera does you can use it in different ways you're mm. not you're not stuck there it's the options it gives you it's the internal mm. codex it's all those different bits and pieces and if i just flick on here so we've got f-log 2 mm -hmm. which i know that you know from the xh2s yep. um, and we've got up to about 14 stops yep okay uh we've got 4k 60 which is lovely to have and remember what this camera does, and if I just click on, we've also got 8K30, is fundamentally, it's got such a fast processor. We're trying to make medium or large format sensor cinematography as quick and as convenient as full frame. Mm. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the challenge, really, that perhaps the previous cameras in video struggled with. Mm -hmm. This does not. They were um, getting close. They were getting but very I think close. this might now be there. They were getting very close. We've got internal ProRes mm -hmm. HQ, which I think is really important. ProRes, ProRes LT, um, for those larger projects where you know you want to grade. And of course, because it's ProRes, it'll work in any NLE, edit easily. That's exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got stabilization, which is really important with a large sensor. Mm -hmm. As I'm sure you're aware, even in photography, it's really nice to have some stabilization that works really well. And we've got five axis with manual glass. And obviously better with GF glass, the actual, the actual Fujifilm GF lenses. So the lenses. GF lenses that yes. have IS. It's improved. It will improve. Exactly. And there's something we're going to touch on is what this mount gives you is options mm. for all sorts of glass. You know, mm -hmm. it's really exciting. Uh, we've got SSD, external recording. Which, and is that everything the camera can do internally or is that a selection? No, I think it's things? everything you everything. can do, do externally and you can mount it. I mean, that's really useful if you've got to do an edit straight away. Mm. You haven't even got time to offload. Mm. You know, you can just put, put it on a cage, put it on a rig and, and record directly to that. And, and um, there's, talking of cages and rigs, yeah. there's even ones like the new Condor Blue handle that has yes. a um, SSD inside the inside, handle. I like that, that handle. one of those. Um, I love that. Sandisk that's really clever. drives that's inside. A, it's a very clever thing. And we've got Waveform. Yes. We're getting the video tools. You can see my smiley face because I'm very happy about that, <laughs> um, which is really important. We've got vectors, scopes, all of that stuff coming in. It shows that Fujifilm is taking filmmaking and video very seriously, just as seriously as photography. Absolutely. So the bit that confused, while we're still on this slide, mm. the bit that's confused me the most trying to figure out the camera before physically getting my hands on it, 
so it might be useful to clear up is the whole 4k 60 8k 30 what crops what doesn't crop what's the full image circle can i go it? can i give you a slide a in slide three times is okay. it, yeah there's yeah. one that Fine. kind of shows that and i think f for your viewers that'll be a bit clearer, bit clearer. Sure. i mean okay. i love talking charts without a slide <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that to them. Um, and we've got sensor crops, which we're going to touch on because you've got that canvas, so you can decide in different ways, mm -hmm. you know, how you want to crop it. This though is the most important number, in my opinion, mm -hmm. on the camera, and it's 15 milliseconds rolling shutter in 4K 30, 25, 24, 16, 9, 17, 9, and that, which is great. That's. Oh, it, I don't know. That was the number. I went. Oh, how was that? How, yeah. that's not possible surely yeah. what's going on because that's right in the pit with other flagship full frame Absolutely. cameras and it kind of takes away if not better than quite yeah it is better than some of them um but it kind of removes the, perhaps the, one of the reasons where you wouldn't shoot large format medium format yeah cinema because that was probably the biggest gotcha of yeah. the previous generation yeah. was oh just be careful how much you move it because there's yeah. rolling shutter there i mean anything under 20 is i think usable and the lower yeah. the number the better but 15 was like okay now we're really pitching pitching in and it's very very usable yeah. absolutely absolutely yeah. Yeah, I think you had a little play, didn't you? And you found... I, I did, well, I did the old yeah. shake it backwards and forwards. But, you know, with some cameras, you, you can you can just instantly tell when you start hand-holding it and go, oh, actually, that just feels a little bit jello-y yes. when you're just looking through the viewfinder. And there was none of that. It just felt perfectly... Definitely, you know, definitely. Just and like using any other camera. And that's what it should... In order for this to be adopted by video users, it needs to just feel... You know, you shouldn't feel like there's a big step backwards in any one of those areas. Yes. And so that is a that is a massive, massive deal. It is. I don't know what magic fairy dust they've put in it, mm. but to do that, I think oh, it's... probably a fast processor. That would be it. That's <laughs> I think, I'm not sure it's magical fairy. Dust. I think I probably used I the. It's a fast I was using the technical the technical term. Okay, that we, that we use. But no, yes. no one over my head. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but no, you, I'm joking aside. It is that that, that, <laughs> that processor that makes the difference. And abso I mean, absolutely. Fifteen. That's Fifteen. Brilliant. I know. And there are a lot of big numbers with this camera. You mm. know, the sensor size. 102 megapixel sensor. The, exactly. The resolutions that will come to. But that number is what makes it usable for people, I think, to do yeah. a lot of different projects Absolutely. in a lot of different ways. It really opens it up. Um, now, here's a scalable sensor mode slide for you, which perhaps uh -huh. going back to you saying to me, how does this sensor oh, I see. scale? This is one you wanted to show. Yeah, you. I wanted yeah. to show you this. Um, on the left, you'll see the four. We've got GF, which is the widest. So we're talking here about selectable crop modes yes. inside the camera. On the sensor. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been optimized for different lenses. So different lens, depending on your lens package, depending on what, what you're using. Um, and I'll talk about how I've played around with them and what I've discovered, actually, just yep. you, you, in the short time I've had this. We have GF, which is the widest. Yep. Okay. And obviously, if you're running a native GF lens, you'd want to put it on that. Yep. Okay. Because it would also take all of the data from that lens and it would make corrections for you. Um, lenses like the new 55 1.7, which is glorious because it eye tracks and it's got object detection and all of, and all of that and yeah. it's a fantastically fast lens what kind of focal length would that give you on a medium format gotta sensor? Go, gotta go backwards yeah so yeah. that would be more like a 35 on a full so frame 38 40 exactly yeah. it's that yeah. it's that kind of if it's exactly. more like 40 that i really like 40 mil it's I love just 40. an everyday it's fun kind of, yeah i really like being that little bit wider than 50 it's different though from other cameras because traditionally we're used to going the other way aren't we yeah we're thinking, yep. okay, the sensors are smaller we're going up now with this size we're actually going back we're yeah. going we're going the opposite so you have GF, then you go to Premista, which is our cinema range, our full frame cinema zooms, the Premista yes. range. So that's that blue that's that box. blue one. You see, it's just slightly smaller. Yeah, than the that's GFX. interesting because everyone says full frame, but what obviously we now know about the Premistas is actually their coverage is slightly larger. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that blue box is actually slightly wider than thirty five millimeter full. Yes, just, just, that, that's actually a really important point. By 35 millimeter, Fuji are meaning full frame. They are. They're not meaning super 35 millimeter. This is designed, this is not Fuji. This is just the general um, terminology, if you like, a it, cinema. It's confusing. <laughs> it's designed to confuse people at the outset. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Super 35 and full frame 35 are very different things. Yep. Uh, and then you'll see the purple box in the middle, and that's 8K DCI. And that's a 1.21 crop, okay, for 8K, which is smaller 
mm-hmm. but still larger than Super 35. Mm-hmm. And we had a little play earlier, mm-hmm. and we put some Super 35 zooms on here. Yeah, in fact, some of them on the on the table in front of us. There was the, yeah. um, what was it? It was the DZO yeah. tours. And it was really nice that mm-hmm. they were totally usable. And again, it just widens the glass that we can put on the front Yeah, um, in, that, in that sense. So it's opening up. All of that. So you have those four here. You go on. Right? So for the for the for my earlier point with the four K up yep. to sixty P and then the eight K up to thirty P, mm-hmm. that's four K even up to sixty P with no crop. That's no the crop. full yes. GFX yes. mode on that yes. chart. Yes, yes, yes. But if you want to up the resolution to eight K, you do have to go down. It. So it's all, again, it's backwards compared it's, to a lot of other. It's back to front. <laughs> it's back to front. Um, but what I will say quickly for those of for those viewers who are worried about, oh my god. I'm shooting 8K, my data rates will be off the mm. scale. I did a load of tests and actually I could do 42 10 bit long op and it was really H265 and it's actually very manageable. Mm-hmm. You can, it's not crazy data rates. We've actually had a question about that already. Um, so George is saying, um, hi all, with the GFX 100 Mark II being a digital medium format, what are the file sizes for raw video? Um, by raw video, I'm assuming he means just the normal oh. video because it does do raw, but only it for does. The HMI, we do ha- right? we do have support already from Blackmagic and, uh, and Atomos for your ProRes raw and B raw. Yep. Um, so that will be regular yep. ProRes raw or Blackmagic raw exactly. Rate. Same as the from any and other camera. We've got a on the side on the side the here. If I was just to look at our ports just quickly, uh, we've got a full size HDMI. Yep. Okay. We've got a USB C. That's for SSD or power for trickle. Yep. Obviously, uh, we've got. 3.5 input and we've got an ethernet okay mm-hmm. for high speed data which i'll talk about later uh, and then what they've done quite interesting they've done the same thing weirdly on the xs20 which i really like is they've taken XS20 is the little the one. little baby yeah. one yeah they've taken they've taken mm. the headphone socket to the other side which i like because often this side gets very full mm-hmm. and you're all, the one thing you're taking in and out often is your monitoring headphones. Mm-hmm. So it's quite nice to separate it. Pull that out and put it on the other side. Your HDMI cable. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, without messing with this side if it's all locked yeah. down w- w- with cables. Now, George also asks what media does, since we're looking at ports. George um, is asking some very pertinent questions. He is. He is. Uh, what media does the GFX 100 Mark II take? Uh, CFast Type B. Okay. okay, here we are. And a fast SD. Right, so two card slots, yep. one C- CF Express Type B yep. and one SD card. Yeah, and on the subject of media, obviously ProRes to the fast card. Right. Okay, because you need a faster card for ProRes, higher data rates. Sure. Um, but there's a little trick that I have discovered, which I'll share with you, which I've been putting a 512 card in my CFast B, mm-hmm. and I've been putting a 128 in my SD. Okay. And what I've been doing is if I'm shooting for a couple of days, I just leave the bigger card to fill and I hot swap out my little one, do you see what I'm, yeah, sort of redundancy which I'm to, then to putting away and putting another little one in. Mm-hmm. And in a sense, I'm keeping my whole job on the big card and then just having that, having the safety, if you like, of an mm-hmm. external backup. So weirdly, you find new ways of handling and wrangling your data. But mm. it's, it's a sensible option to have those two card slots sure. supporting and each other. And it can, because some cameras with two card slots can't actually record to both at the oh, same can, time. You can this do proxies. Can do everything you can do it to a- both. Absolutely, yes, yes. In full res, not just yes. proxies. No, you can do full res. So you can cool. do, you can't do pro res on the SD. That's not possible. Okay. Because the data rates. Okay. But you could do a 10-bit 422 all I, yep. okay, to both, because cards can support it. Or you can do pro res to one and a slightly less to the SD. But bear in mind, anything that's 422 10-bit, if I'm honest, has the information you need. It's plenty of resolution. I would always re- say to people, what are you delivering in? And if you're delivering in 4K, great. If you're delivering in 1080, brilliant. But remember, match your acquisition resolution to what you need in the edit and what you're actually going to deliver in. So it's comfortable there. Yeah. Um, while we're talking about codecs and stuff like mm. that, he did ask about file sizes for the video. Yes. Um, I don't think you've got a slide on I that. I haven't have got. You? No, that's, that, that's, that's. Does the camera tell you what the data rates it are does, in it, the menus? No, it, obviously in the card, it'll give me the amount. Off okay. The top okay. of my head, we had an hour and twenty, I mean, an hour and twenty-five in eight K in four two two ten bit um, long up. Okay, so it's an hour and twenty, which is pretty good on a five twelve. So yep. that was that was a and that's H two six five. Yeah, exactly. So that that was good. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's quite mm. and it's scalable. So if you know you're shooting your cinematic masterpiece with a ton of grading and you need ProRes, you pick ProRes. Mm-hmm. If it's a fast turnaround, it's online or whatever, then you kind of scale it around. Personally, 
I normally shoot some form of 4K, mm -hmm. even if I'm doing a 1080 output. Mm -hmm. It just makes sense because I've got more headroom. I can play mm -hmm. with stuff. I can stabilize. I can push in all, all of that losslessly. Um, but it is nice to have 8K. Mm. And there's one mode that I haven't talked about yet, but there's another slide. I get more excited about my slides, Carl. Come on then. Can I keep going? Oh, of course you okay, can. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> um, I haven't even touched on this. Anamorphic yep. support. Okay, that last box that we were on a second ago. Anamorphic support. And this is really interesting. This is where that larger sensor, I'm going to think, I think we're going to be seeing a load of these on drama sets um, because it is a really small camera package. You can see what I built when we were in launch in Stockholm. Mm. Um, we had Atlas Mercury there, mm. okay, with the camera, with that wonderful tilt EVF, a little bit of um, power on the back. And that's a, that's a frame literally in the gallery, de-squeezed um, obviously on my, on my EVF for framing so I could see what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so exciting to have D-squeeze in 2, 1.8, 1.5, 1.33, and 1.3 for framing on the LCD and the EVF. And you can save, let me get this right, you can save in two times on the card D-squeezed in 8K, so you can actually save it, and hopefully that will be expanded as well. And we were having just a quick play around with this. I, this might not be accurate because this was figured mm. out quite quickly before the stream. But I believe it only has full frame anamorphic record options rather than Super 35. I, I, well, you can put anything anamorphic. on the front. You can put anything on yeah. the front. But if you put Super 35 on, as we discovered, you're getting quite a thin image yeah, in yeah, certain yeah. modes. Do you know what yes. I mean? I think we have to be honest. It's a massive sensor. Mm -hmm. If you can go full frame. You get the benefits. Yes, and uh, there, there's some fantastic. Like you've got up there the Atlas, Atlas Mercury. The new, the there's new the new Pava. DZO film Pavo. Yeah, exactly. they look really good. Yeah, um, more and more full frame anamorphic. You know, it used to be, you, if you wanted full frame anamorphic, you had to get a cook, and yeah. that was it. That was yes. like your only choice. Yeah. Or I think well, did Hawk have a? But you know, it was all such big money. I think it's amazing nowadays. Yeah. So for, it's comparatively, it's Absolutely. very affordable. And Absolutely. lots of options for people, definitely. And what's nice is we see more and more anamorphic content on our tellies, on streaming, on yeah. drama. There is that call for it. And I think it will also appeal to the same sort of customers that might be looking at this camera. Because for me, this is a camera for people who um, want something that looks a little bit different to the rest of the crowd. You know, they're, yeah. they're looking for an image. They're looking for a feel and a bit of character that might not be what everyone else is out there getting. Yeah. And that's why they're being drawn towards medium format. And I think anamorphic ticks the same sort of box. It does. And so having both in one camera package is I've really got appealing. Some, I've got something else up my sleeve as well, which, I, which, I'll, which, I'll, which, I'll, which I'm desperate slides. to show you. Come, Come on, on in. I, I get excited. <laughs> let's, just talk, let's just talk about the size for a minute. Because we've got that enormous, enormous canvas, um, we can put cinema large format lenses. You've got the GF lenses, of course, but, you know, we can put medium format glass on this. Yep. Um, if like me, I don't know if you're like me after a, a few drinks on eBay, um, I have a growing collection. <laughs> what, of light Stalias? No, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking more Mamiya 645. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think you've got this light. I go and buy a light Stalia late at night. Exactly. No. exactly. <laughs> I wish. Um, no, but you can find, if you're clever... Mm. And, and, you know, you can find medium format glass that can Absolutely. be adapted. Glass opens up new things. In fact, there's a, there's a growing community of people who are reverse engineering those medium format, like the, the, the and you get, back down to full frame sensors with expanders yeah. and all that well, you've sort got of stuff. You've got know, people like that who can do adapters and all, all sorts. This yeah. is basically. Yeah. Um, um, so on this particular rig here, just, just, mm. just for fun, I've got the wooden camera adapter on here. Yep. So that so obviously I've taken my GFX mount, I've uh, put the wooden camera one on, and I bolted it both at the bottom so there's no twist. So that then yep. allows me to put anything with the PL straight on the front. And this is how I think the majority of our customers yeah. will be. You know, yeah. major, they, it's nice to know you you can hire yes. like Stalias, but I mean, re realistically, people are going to be sticking. Something Even like this I mean, on you know the, the I mean, those are the Schneider. You know the ice, the ice goes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they you were brilliant. It's bright blue, bright blue. It's a Smurf lens, mm -hmm. as I like to say. Um, but forty six coverage, and really good mm. on this sensor, and mm. so small that you can actually. It's almost like a handheld little dock package, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. with the EVF. You can run around with it. Um, oh, I mean, look at the, the vest bid you've got on there. It's, yeah, it's I mean, I've added a few. Size. I've added a few toys just sure. for, just for power and screen and stuff and, and ND at the front. But um, but absolutely, you can go as big or as small with this package. That's yep. 
that's the fun of it, definitely. Uh, lots and lots of glass fits it, lots of different looks that you can put on, yep. for sure. And we found because because that 8K mode is 1.2 times crop mm. over the over the medium format, that's actually enough for the majority of um, full frame lenses yes. to cover it or nearly cover it. Like we were playing around with the um, TZO Carters and the mm. Vespids and that kind of thing. Very common lenses um, on the market nowadays. And they, for most cases, cover it. It's just when you get to the very wider focal yeah. lens, you might see a little bit at the edges. But for I've the got, most part, it looks pretty good. I've got a thing for that, though. A little, a little crop for that. Now, this is my attempt to turn a baffling um, slide of numbers okay into something that perhaps is a little bit easier to digest. Right. Um, if I go from the top, I just wanted to say it's 8K, obviously 79 uh, frame rates, 16.9, you can see, also in 4K. The 5.8K, now this is something that we re I really want to stress is really exciting. It's like a cine style 2351 full sensor crop. Right, so that's okay. five, that's not 5.8K as a crop into the sensor. That, no. That's 5.8K chopping off the tops and bottoms to get... They've done something far more exciting. People call it 6K wide or something you like that. You can call it 6K cinema, stick on, whatever you like, wide. It's, yeah. I mean, just we've put, dare I say it, lenses that might not excite you, and you put it into this mode and you go, oh, my oh my Lord. Mm. It looks, to, to a layperson perhaps, it looks anamorphic, but it's spherical in a simple mm. way. You have that incredible stretch. That real it, width. It's not just cropping off the top and bottom. No, it's, so it's, it's not also just going wide. It's issues. giving you the it full width. Bit wider. And I'm surprised. I mean, I can't wait to shoot something narrative with it because yeah. it it's going to give people something else. I mean, as a small point, the 19 to 45 Premista, it doesn't vignette mm. in, at 19 mil in 5.8 K. That's insane. I mm. mean, it's it's you know, it's it's not 180 degree. I'm not saying it's that, but it's a tremendous look mm. on, on, on that sensor. It's really, really nice. Then we've got 3.2, 4.8 open gate anamorphic mode mm -hmm. for your full frames. That's where you might have your Atlas Mercury's or your Pavos. Yep. Then you've got your bread and butter, if you'll excuse the expression. Yep. 4K DCI or UHD up to 60. Okay. And then 2K DCI or HD up to 120. Okay. Um, which is surprising, you know. I say surprising, it's very usable because mm. sometimes people tag on, you know, higher frame rates and, and, they're, and they're mushy and actually, horrible. And, or you think, I'm not going to use that. But actually, I've used it. I can put it on a preset mm -hmm. on a C1 to, to C5. You could have slow-mo here or something like that. And it's really nice just to have. You can just punch it in, go back to narrative, go to slow-mo, et cetera, like that. That hopefully gives you a little idea of some of, of just some of the modes in here mm -hmm. and of course depending on what lens you use you can then choose which one of these you like or which one works with that particular piece of glass and you've sure. got you've got to experiment i think that's the great thing about this camera well there's a lot to experiment with yeah. there's a lot of different crop options yeah. and, and all the rest of it and so um inevitably you can find something that will work yeah for the lenses that you want to be using for your project. Totally. And even even the crop, though, even the cine crop, the super wide, it's still nearly 6K. Mm -hmm. You can crop into that if you want to. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, you, we, mm -hmm. In terms of resolution, these these are high resolutions mm -hmm. that are going to give you a lot of options in post mm -hmm. in terms of what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Shall I move on? Yes. Yes. Who knows what's next? Uh, it's just an internal bit of, bit of stuff for Codex for you. We, I know we've spoken about some of this. Uh, the ProRes, the All Intra, the Long Gop. Um, I know your viewers probably understand all this already. Sure. But yeah. but it's just just to give you an idea of, of, of what's available. Again, I love having it in camera. And and yes, I can connect an external device to record. Mm -hmm. Of course I can. But I don't have to. It's a choice. Yeah. And talking of external devices, George actually came up with another quite good question, which I'm not sure if you're going to know the answer to or okay, not. Okay, I'll try. Um, he says he loves that it has SSD recording and Ethernet. Yes. It would be useful for both photo and video, assuming that photos can go straight to the SSD, that is. Do you know if I love the photos? George. George's questions are probing Do, and in depth. Good, right? Yeah, I like this. Do, um, can we I'm, save the photos to the SSD drive, or is it just useful? I haven't done video it, mode? but I'm going to say yes. I can't it would see be cool, why not. Wouldn't it? It's like a sort of halfway tethering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can't see why not. I mean, remember, you can also put uh, anamorphic and strange glass on the front and shoot photos. Mm. Do, 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 do mm. you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it goes both ways. Mm. So, so yes, I'm going to say yes and. Mm. You know, 
That's what I'm and saying, George. We'll correct in the comments if that's yes. wrong. <laughs> George, George, if I've got that wrong, that me a call. It will be down in the comments but below. I'm, I'm going to say yes, yes, it can, and it's great that it has it because again, mm. it's just options, it's choices. Absolutely. Um, and there are some interesting cages already out. I know uh, Small Rig have got some, Condor Blue have got some. I'm sure Tilter have got something coming imminently. Wooden Camera, all of those people. So mm. it's going to have a lot of support in in, in those terms. Mm. Absolutely. Shall I w- roll on? Let's move on. Uh, ah. This is exciting. Frame.io, do you, you know what Frame.io is? Absolutely. I love Frame.io. Yep. For people who don't know Frame.io, it's a cloud-based portal um, that basically can host, deliver all of your video and now photography content. Yep. Uh, it was bought by Adobe for a large amount of money a few years ago. And it's brilliant because instead of 30 emails, I get to send a link yep. or a portal and invite everyone in and they can actually write on the timeline and they, we can have that communication about an edit, um, you know, literally on the timeline, yep. and it's fantastic. Now, how do you get it from there to the cloud? Well, this camera has it built in. So on the X-H2 and the X-H2S, you had to add the connective grip, but this is the first camera to have it actually built into the body. So mm. what you can, I mean, in theory, you could be in Africa shooting mm. something, and you could be tethered if you connect it either to directly to a modem via the ethernet or even your iphone you can push it up and you can either stop and send stuff or you can send stuff as you shoot so you could be taking pictures or you could be sending proxies now what i will caveat that with is don't try and send 8k pro res <laughs> on your iphone that would be wrong um you've obviously got to choose the right connection yeah. speed to match but you have full choice i mean if essentially from camera to frame IO, it's mm. a rushes tool. Yeah. It, it's so that people can see your dailies. They can see what you're working on um, straight away. Yeah. I mean, the- and there, there is a, a, an argument for it for reportage kind of mm. work as well, because often those proxies are good enough that, you know, sure, it's not 8K ProRes, yeah. but they don't want that in reportage stuff. No, and also so, if, it's, if, it's, if it's speed of turnaround exactly. for Newswire or whatever. You can be editing whatever, it straight you, away you just want and it's it good out. enough. Quite. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I saw a fantastic film that Frame IO did at the Sundance Festival where mm. they had 30 crews, you know, in that sort of Alpine village and they're literally throwing it back mm. and it's being cut there and then and it's going straight out. Mm. Um, you do The nice thing about this is you get to choose so you can pick proxy or you can pick jpeg oh, great okay and also if you lose connection it knows where it's gone and it connects when you connect again it picks up seamlessly which i th- find quite useful so yeah. so you know so, it's, so it's not a process where you know everyone's tried transferring files mm. across to their phone app or whatever no you, you've got to connect it and then yeah. you've got to wait for it to load and then you've got to no, select the that. things to upload and Once start it's... process and if it fails you've got to restart the whole thing and yeah it's a it's not that pain. no it's not that it's, it's not that at all i mean it, it, it the you've got to have a good wi-fi Mm-hmm. Or or hardwire, I think I personally think into a modem of some description. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To get mm-hmm. to get you sp- the speed that you want. Another thing that I know some photography studios are doing is because there's Ethernet. Mm-hmm. If you had say six studios, or even if you're filming video in six studios, but you've got one viewing room with creative directors, you can mm-hmm. feed via that the high mm-hmm. res, the full res, and they're actually going to run six cameras in six studios back to one room. Mm. and then you only need one creative director because they don't need to go I around mean, the rooms because it's coming. That sounds like an e-commerce dream, yeah, for it, example, it, it all is. those big e-commerce it studios. Is. And then the cards in the camera fundamentally mm. become about backup and redundancy, mm-hmm. and strangely enough, you never dump them mm-hmm. because it's all going straight out of there, mm. which is, is a different way of thinking about, that, obviously not for someone out in the field, mm. but it's an interesting way in which the whole industry is going, mm-hmm. and it's great that we've got that connectivity and this Frame mm-hmm. IO built in. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. It, uh, once you do this, you never go back to email because <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, they, they can't pretend they've lost it. Yeah. <laughs> it's there. And, yeah. They, and I even deliver I even deliver through this now. So there's the edit process, but then I'll throw the 4K up or whatever it is. There's your mm-hmm. final. And you can say you approved can at any point. and done. Yep. So it's it's really nice to have it, but to have it, have it built in. Uh, and now my favorite bit of the whole camera, it's not even the sensor. It's that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this is a really interesting... So I talk about mm. EVFs on the channel a lot. Yes. Sony on their A7S, A1, that kind of things, have got a 9.4 million dot mm-hmm. OLED on the back. And it's the best viewfinder I've ever used. Yes. 
until I picked that up today. Yes. Not because that looks better, because their one also looks amazing, but that looks just as good. And it can do this stuff. It can <laughs> you know, do it's other not just stuff. Stuck um, on the if back. You have a sort of quick look at this. So this is wh when you get the camera. This is how the camera looks basically. And yep. if you do that, as you can I see, mean, that's crazy. suddenly um, it's sort of cleaned it straight off. Now you can get an adapter piece here from mm -hmm. Fujifilm, and if you do go for this camera, you have to get that. And and with this, because I've never used one of these before yeah. this morning, you're bringing that in. I've always looked at that and thought, oh, it looks cool, it looks wobbly. No, it's not so wobbly. Ha that surprised me with its locking mechanisms and its clicking into place. It is. Should we show that on camera? Yeah, Thanks sure, of course we can. So if we have a look here, so two ways you can do it. You can say I don't want it at all, okay, and you mm -hmm. could run the camera even in a very low, you know, low stress way like that. You mm -hmm. could look down and you could do reportage and you could push that to start, mm -hmm. stop. And mm -hmm. you could see your picture and no one knows you're, take, you're t taking any footage. So that's without the EVF. Mm -hmm. Okay. Obviously, we know what it's like when it's on here um, in a conventional stills mode. Sure. But what really got me going, if you'll excuse me if I move that a tiny bit, mm -hmm. is... So the reason I built this, you'll notice if we ignore your lovely wireless connector up here, you see that's offset? Yes. I've actually built a kind of off, offset cage. The reason being is I would normally run this... On a bag, a cine saddle, and I'm I'm in like that, mm. and mm -hmm. so you, it's slightly over to one slightly side, over, he, but... over, over here, and I'm in like that, and I can see it, and I've even because it's got an eye sensor, you can jump between here and here, mm -hmm. so you can see mm -hmm. that, and if you don't want any of this gag and you want to run it in a really low kind of exciting doco way where no one can see you, you put that on here. I'm going to fake it because I'm not going to take that apart, and you have it here. Mm -hmm. And you have three points of contact mm. straight away, your mm -hmm. eye here mm -hmm. and here. That and the fact you can pivot it and hold it, and I'll just demonstrate that as well, is that I can turn it both ways and I can angle it down and up like that. That I mean, opens up ergonomically how you can use the camera. It really reminds me, just from a photography point, let's ignore video for a second or, yeah. or just assume that, you know, you're shooting video in photography mode, which I do actually really quite like to do um, with holding an EVF up to your eye. It reminds me of back when every like 5d mark ii and everything used to just have a flat lcd on the back mm. and then all of a sudden we started to be able to articulate out to one side and everyone went i never want a flat <laughs> lcd ever again this reminds me a little bit of like that you know yeah. if we've got loads of cameras with evfs on the back yeah. but they're all locked in place and now all of a sudden we can twist it around so you know if you happen to be taking a, a still image like that Sure, they all work great. Yes. But what if you want to go lower? What if you want to take a really and nice low angle? Filmmakers don't really want to do that, though, as much as people think. No, think nobody does. Unless, no. like, I, I yeah. love shooting because before working here, I used to do a lot of sort of weddings and that mm. kind of work where I liked people thinking I was just a photographer or someone's cousin taking some photos or whatever, you know, not a, not running around with a rig like this, but drawing attention to myself. I liked to be in sort of stealth mode, if you like, people thinking I'm a photographer. Um, so there's that niche mm. but that is not how most people make no, video <laughs> no it's, it's it's not i mean the lovely thing about it is if you even turn it that way you can actually turn it like this yes so i've seen people shoot you know if you mm. if you were going vertically it, it, it goes both ways mm. in, in terms in terms of how you how you can do it so look you can see i'm turned off off axis yep. there do you know what i mean so there's so, a there's a locking there's two, dial there's on two. the side and there's, one on the there's, if i there's there's a locking piece here that enables me to turn it and then lock it. And then and on so the corner... With it locked, that's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. And on the corner, there's the vertical. So I can go up and down like so. And this rig has naturally evolved over the weeks mm -hmm. where I went, okay, I know that I want to use that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give that up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you could say, oh, but you can run an external. I can, mm -hmm. but it's another thing to buy. Yep. It's another thing to power. Yep. And it makes it heavier. And it yep. won't be as good, ironically... Has that mm -hmm. because which it's, is a nine point four million dollar OLED, and, yeah. and it looks better than real life. Yep. So I don't want to replace it. I want to make. I want to use it, and that yeah. for me is so exciting in terms of yep. the usability of the camera. Um, and who knows? Oh, yeah. We've uh, so my we've feedback. just had a comment oh, from yes. Angry Rabbit Production saying Rabbit. I just got this camera a week ago and ordered the angle extension for the EVF. I well, absolutely love it. That's nice to hear. That is nice to hear. I mean, it it it, it make it just makes a lot of sense before before playing with it today i've always looked at it and thought that looks really cool i should try that so, 
but I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. Yeah, because I've got two cameras, forgive me, can I do something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, while while you're doing that, yeah, um, okay. George put a comment on what we were talking about previously with Frame.io. He said, hang on, can you send files to Frame.io and write to internal slash external media at the same time? Yes. Yes. So you you're, you're recording normally. Yeah, so I'm recording, yeah, yeah. And then um, just happens to be syncing to Frame.io frame whenever you connect is, it. is a proxy cloud-based workflow yep. that is running from the camera. It is not in any way affecting the external HDMI or the internal recording. Yep. Now, forgive me, because I've got a bit of homemadeness over, yeah, over sure. here. I know you were laughing at me. <laughs> you yeah. want to put your, is, your vintage yeah, nickel yeah. lens on I love your I love, lovely big sensor. I love vintage nonsense. So I've got a very old uh, 1970s radioactive bit of nick on here. Okay? Um, and it's I've, not actually radioactive. No, it's obviously Don't worry. not radioactive. No, no, that would be wrong. And I wanted to show you how you could potentially use it. I've just swapped cameras with this. And again, you're all going to agree that in the bag, it's like that, mm -hmm. okay? So in the bag, it's like this. This is how it is. And then I pull it out like that, and I go vertical. I mean, it really looks like an old film And I pull an, it an in like this, camera and then I'm here. With that lens okay? on the front of it. It looked lovely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll all be out of focus, but it looked lovely. <laughs> um, but the point I'm trying to make is you can see how stable I am without doing anything. Yes. And yes, because yes, I've yes. got the three points. Now, I can even put my um, audio receiver here. Oh, of course, because it's, yeah, it's got hot shoes. It's got hot shoes. So it's you could hot slap so, a so Rode Wireless Pro yeah, or whatever so could, on the top I, of the EVF. That's 100% what I'm going to do when I'm running it in a sort of lo-fi mm. kind of that configuration. That is a really nice lo-fi you, you could hand pull, or if you've got a cage, you could obviously mm -hmm. put a little motor on. Mm. But it's something quite nice about mm. that in terms of ergonomics. Got IBIS. Yeah, got IBIS. Uh, and then I would I'd, use the camera like that. And then I just I just build my uh, custom sensor crops on C1 to C3. Mm -hmm. Go wide, go tight, go normal. Mm -hmm. Job done. There you go. Cool. Should we move on? Yes, I think we've talked about the EVF enough. I, haven't we? I think EVF we both get quite excited. Day. I seriously EVFs. <laughs> Very exciting. I've kind of touched on this. We've we've touched on the media. Yes. Any questions on the media or the ports before I roll on from that? Or are we all uh, Other than, so no, I haven't had any questions come in, but um, okay. presumably on SD, it's V90 or go home. Well, it's right? not that. It's not that. It's just that, it's, what does someone say? If you, if you bought a Ferrari, you wouldn't put potato juice in it, okay? <laughs> um, because don't buy an expensive camera, and this goes for any camera, and put your V30 card that you bought yeah. 10 years ago 10 in, years ago. And then complain. Scratched up the old yeah, SanDisk yeah. thing, yeah. But also V90s are not expensive. Even the no. CFast has come down in price. I'm astonished. When it first well, came the, out... The Angel Bird SE yeah. cards are really quite cheap. They, yeah. Consider where they were initially, where it was scary pricey, now they're actually down to very similar price in terms... Even yeah. 512s were kind of getting down to 200 or sub 200. And that, that's, that's not a lot of money for when I think... What yeah. I bought, and they've got a media on my red as well now. Ten years SC. ago, yes, exactly. Yes, let's not go <laughs> down that like road. That. It's a small car. Um, um, <laughs> we've just had a question coming yes. from Angry Rabbit. Oh no, sorry, it's not even a, a a question. It's just a comment on the EVF. The thing that struck me about the angle adapter is that it feels like a really solid piece of metal. It, it just is. inspires confidence with its strong build, and I think that's exactly what I was alluding to earlier. It looks like it's going to be wobbly and flimsy. No, it's really, really not. It's not plasticky in any way, shape, or form. And imagine if one day in the future. We had, we had, and this is not happening, so don't blame me if it doesn't happen. If you could relocate it. it. Yes. Well, I, I think if I you even could relocate earlier, it. Tilter make that places, cable for the yeah. Black Magic yeah. EVF that, for their pocket cameras that does yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely be on the phone to them straight away to see but if they can do one for that. It's, that'd be it, very it's, good. it's all about operability. Mm -hmm. It's about making the user experience easier yep. and simpler. And that's what that EVS, EVF yeah. does fun Absolutely. fundamentally. Um, but we said we talked about the EVF enough. We have film <laughs> simulations. Do you know, Carl, they work in video? Yes, I did, because I have an X-T3 at home and I love using these film simulations. There and there's a load of them in this kind of newer cameras that there I is, don't get. There which is. I, I mean, there's a couple about. of things to say about them. First of all, there's a new one, Riala Ace, exactly. which is excellent. Yep. It's kind of... If I had to compare it to Provia, it's just a bit punchier. The blacks are in. Yep. Um, the thing that I would really recommend to people is to frame up the same scene with yep. some over and under exposure in and do every single simulation in the camera. Yeah. Go through them all. Absolutely. And then tweak them to taste. Take your two favourites. Or just do it quickly before yeah. your next shoot. You know, yeah. say you're, you shoot in F-Log and that's the workflow that you do and you set up an interview, but just... 
you know, while you're asking them what they have for breakfast to check your sound levels or whatever, just quickly roll off a clip yeah. in each of them so that you've got footage from one of your actual projects to look that's back a, at later. That's a good idea, yeah. To, to see what they all look like. Um, and then do the actual shoot in Eflor. Don't shoot in something that you're deciding there and then. Um, but then for the next one, you know. There's a huge amount of excitement in the industry at the moment about things like Sony's Cinetone mm. or, you know, Canon have had YDR for ages, which I use for this channel a huge amount. I think that's what is on all of our cameras right now is YDR. Um, and people are loving those because it gives you a very similar look to what you would have ended up grading the log to look like anyway, yeah. rather than what we've all been used to in our cameras of Rec. 7 and 9 picture profiles, which are just super ugly and you turn them all off. Um, and you have to shoot and log, even if you yeah. aren't really needing the dynamic range. Um, this feels like you've got 10 of those yes. style of picture profiles in, and you could very happily use any of them. I mean, I always compare it to the world of stills, where traditionally in the old days you had to shoot raw. Mm -hmm. And then what came along is that everyone's JPEGs got really good. Mm -hmm. And you got to the point where you got, oh, hang on, my JPEG is 98% of where I would go with RAW. Yep. So I'll just deliver a JPEG. In video now, especially with these simulations, if you've got to do color work, absolutely F-Log, and I'll talk about it in a second. But go F-Log 2, go that way. You but can still grade the other ones. You can. <laughs> and also, I mean, I do like minus three sharpening. So I knock sharpening back because it doesn't need to be sharpening in camera. Plus one sat. And I also do the curve. So I might bring down the highlights on my curve in my chosen set, in my chosen profile. And then absolutely, like you said, mm. I'd save it. That's my banker. Mm. That's my quick turnaround online or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. it's not my cinematic masterpiece one, but it's very good. And I can mm. tweak it to get it very close to where I could get with a LUT. So yeah, absolutely. it gives you choices. Again, it's all about choices. And yeah. they look great. They yeah. look really, really nice. Um, and there's so, there's so many of them now that there there really is a choice for all yeah. sorts of different. You know, everyone's subjective. And um, try try Real Ace. It's really mm -hmm. good. Another thing to mention is I will do when you let me borrow one I, of those cameras. You can't have it from my <laughs> from my cold fingers. Will you pry it? The other thing I do, which I like, is I you know the little baby XS twenty, yes, the tiny one, mm -hmm. right? You could have a color simulation on this and a color simulation on that and turn that into your one handle gim gimbal camera. Sure. Okay. It's the same. And then this is your A rigged camera and that's yep. your B yep. and they match. Yep. There's no, no, no mixing in post. They are the same that color. Is a very good point mm. now. Cause you know, people like Canon and Sony are starting to put their Cinetone or YDR or whatever on multiple cameras, including their stills ones. Fuji's always done that yes. with these. Yes. They all have it. Yeah, and it's uh, you can even put grain on it. So you could, if you wanted to do um, circa war photographer nineteen thirty eight, you could do that with grain. Now, in funnily black and enough, white. you mentioned grain because we've just yeah. had Derek chime yeah. up with. I would love to see in camera grain for video, like Ari is doing on the Alexa thirty five. Are there plans to make this available at some point? It, yes, it's can in there. you add yes. the grain but without the color and yes. contrast? Yes, you can tilt. So, so find your simulation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, should you, we show we, it should on? We, should we see if I'm lying or should we see if it's true? Well, let's see, let's turn I'm, it on. I'm let's just, just let's, see we'll if let, you can find it. Let's so just let it boot up so that you guys have got a picture. Let us know if you've got a picture. I'll go into men. I can see men. Nathaniel's con. Oh, let me do, let me do something. The problem is it turns You're itself good, off good. to save battery. Let's have a look. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go down here. I don't, I don't know if you've got this yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have. You yeah. have. Okay, that's good. So one color. That's good. Keep going down. Keep going down. It's good for you actually all to see this anyway as we run through. So you can see that. So f film simulations. Now you can see, for instance, that I'm currently in Riala Ace. In fact, because you can see that, I might just for fun flick through them. If you just to show you, if you want to see the colors, George so, has also asked: Are these simulations baked into the footage, or is it just for display on the LCD? And um, these are baked into the footage. So this is a, this is not going down an F-Log to LUT workflow. Yeah. This is the opposite of that. This is quick turnaround. Let's make a color science that I love, yep. and let's burn it in. And it's having that change. So if I and I don't think you can use them as LUTs for F-Log. No, right. no. But what that you would can, be a lovely feature. I mean, what's interesting on stills is, of course, you've actually, like on Capture One with the, mm. with the, um, with the tethering, all of these profiles are pre-built in. So you can apply them in for, for stills. But, for, but you can burn these in in video. You can see as I flick through, I've got a lovely shot of you probably out of focus uh, with the mic. But you can see 
the different characteristics mm-hmm. as I gently sort of jump through some different ones. I'm not going to leave you in CPU, you look too old fashioned. <laughs> I'll move you back into the world of color. Um, so yes, so that, that, that's where I'm going to select that. That's my color. Then I'm going to go down. To, I've got all sorts of things. So you can, my tone curve, this is fun. So you can see actually here that I've dropped my highlights actually two down, but I'll drop it down here. And then you can see I've raised my blacks. Do you see what I mean? So I've, I've oh, got I that see. level of change. Oh, I Col- see. So the tone. Yeah. So I was able to color. I've gone plus one, but I don't have to. Tone curve is messing about with your yes. your um, your curves. Basically. I'm actually your, messing your, around your with my curve in real time, and I'm burning mm. that tone curve. I'll go back to it so you can see it. I'm burning that into my footage, and this is why I encourage everyone to experiment because the fun of it is finding what you like mm-hmm. and you can turn your you can turn your your, your, your noise off, off you can do various things like that so that sort of shows you Not how so you much. can I'm going to I'm going to focus now I'm going But back can in. you do just simple like film grain I don't think you I can saw in still that so on let's there. just see if you can in in this so potentially potentially they haven't put it in there though it is easy to add I can add mm. it in my in my in my NLE very easily I'm, Sure yeah but- in camera yeah in camera actually in camera i can't see grain on this particular one at the moment let me just check another one just for fun just so i can yeah there's no grain on there actually at the moment so it can't do grain it'll do grain in stills but Mm. not that i can see um i mean the the, the film simulations do apply grain yes so some of them are grainier than others Yeah, yeah 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 um uh, but grain but that would be that would be a really nice thing to add. It's a good thing to add because they've got it in stills. Of, but, yeah. So so it would be not it would be nice to have. Yeah. I've made my war photographer look, you know, a bit of grain. <laughs> Classic. Well, you've seen my ter- you've, se- you've seen my te- my terrible lens. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> which you which you criticized heavily when I came in. I no, com- no comment. <laughs> hasten to add. Um so you've got that, but then you've also got the world of F log. Yes, F-log which is two. a really nice log curve and very e- I was messing about with it earlier, yeah. really easy to grade. 13 stops, uh, maximizes the range of the sensor, obviously. Uh, this is interesting. D-range priority mode, which is a mode in 4K narrative, okay, that allows potentially one stop extra in dynamic range. Okay. In 4K narrative, so you mean 4K yes. up so, to 30p? So, yes, So because it, 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 you're processing high and low. Yes. It's not for 8K, for instance, or you okay. know, higher frame rates, but it will offer you a bit more. So it, it's effectively a, a, a setting that you turn on to boost your dynamic range Correct. a little bit. When you're in F-Log 2. And the only limitation is that you can't do the higher frame rates yes. or a, yes. resolutions so, outside yes, of 4K? but you can do 4K DCI. So you can do all ISO values. You can do all ISO values and it works and it gives, you that, and it gives you that. And I'll be honest with you, I need to play with it a bit more, but it's a really interesting approach. I know other higher end manufacturers have done something previously. It's mm. nice to see Fujifilm getting into that space and trying different stuff. Do you know what I mean? And, I mean, and enhancing it's very that. cool. Very um, cool. Log C, Phantom LUTs, um, all pop on, and we've got Aces color workflow support coming as well. If this was on a multi camera Hollywood shoot, it would fit in. You could actually put, right. your, put your color pipeline. So, not, not right now, there isn't an IGT for Aces, coming. but it's, it is coming. It's all it's coming. It's all on. coming. Um, this is just a quick grade example. That's that's our um, HK Duvo 25,000 uh, log on the left. And then a very quick LUT just popped on the right. Yep. That was for that was for the cup final, Wembley. Very uh, nice. That was, yes, that was that's a fantastic lens. Uh, yes. PL. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. Not pocketable though. No. Carl, <laughs> you, can't, you can't use it in that. No. <laughs> no. But and ironically, ironically though, you could with a PL adapter put this oh, camera it would on be the back quite of that. Fun to put a camera that's on only the back. just occurred to me. We well, could, couldn't okay. we? That would well, do... I can't. I haven't got one of those lying no, no, about no, in my but, showroom. But, 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 but that's a nice idea. Send me a photo when you do. I like that idea. Now this happened last week, and I got excited about this because if you look down that list. Fuji, Fuji Film, is now officially supported in Final Cut. Okay, we've got nice. prop, proper internal third-party log support mm. along along with DJI and Ari, and it's nice to have made that jump. It's mm. part of, I think, showing how Fuji Film serious about filmmaking, and it's Absolutely. nice to get support from Ari. Oh, sorry, from from Apple. In, yeah. In, in in that, you know, it's a it's a good thing. Oh, and presumably there's also they're in Resolve and um, Premiere. Yes. Yes. As well. And and there are so many LUTs, as yep. I'm sure you're aware, whether it's Phantom or Buttery or whatever you whatever you like. Because it is the same log curve that you're using in the X lineup of yes, cameras. Yes, F log well. two. Yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. And actually, I've tried 
those across and they work very, very well. Yeah. So if you Which had... Which is great because the X-H2S, for example, stunningly good camera. Awesome camera. Amazing so B-camera to this. You um, know, a, that and this, what be, a pair of cameras. Would be lovely. Absolutely. They work very well, very well together. And of course, you've got the MK lenses that fit natively on that, on that, on the X-mount. Yes. Yep. Which do which do which have stabilization as well. So I wonder if they cover the 8K in this. Do you know if they do? Oh, there's an X mount, so I'll have to get an X mount to GFX adapter. I haven't Does found that exist? Yet. I don't know. Mm. It's a good. That's for the, that's for the internet to tell me. I'm not sure. I haven't done that yet. Mm. Don't encourage me. I don't think it would work. I don't know. I don't think you can convert X to. Uh, no, no. I mean, I'm going to have many different mounts, as you know. Mm. But that's uh, that's something to think on. I know that from just our tests today. It's great that perhaps the 2120 Super 35 Fujifilm glass, I'm going to be able to use it with this mm -hmm. in those modes, which I didn't know until I had a play today and came in. So this is still very early days with this. Mm -hmm. We're kind of seeing where it expands to and what works sure. for different jobs. Um, time code th wirelessly through the little blue box. Now this is, let, let's, let's go over this in a bit more detail because mm. this is really interesting and something that I don't think anyone else is doing. Yeah. So Atomos have a technology called Air Glue Time Code. Ultrasync Blue. Yes, they did what buy What was the company that they bought? Was it Ultrasync? Um, was, was it, it called uh, Ultrasync? Uh, it was a company like that. Yeah. Um, who were one of these time code companies. Yes. Um, making really good products. Um, I met them at a couple of trade so shows. So you could sync with the um, Atomos products as well. They've now and, built that into yeah, Atomos exactly. products. Yeah, exactly. So this has that technology wirelessly built in, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So this might be the first camera ever to have I believe it is. wireless time code support yeah. with other um, cameras through yeah. Atomos products. Yeah. And they're not massively expensive, those devices, either those little boxes. So I could have that going wirelessly with being a multi-camera setup with one of these yes. cameras that's totally, there. Totally. Stick an Atomos on one of these yeah. cameras and then it will jam. It would all jam they'd all jam together. together. So that, cool. that, that's that's really nice to have. And I think that's also important. We need time code. Mm. Got to have it. Got to mm. have it on proper sets. Um, time it's, code it's, systems, Peter says. That's it, the name. It, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. That we, we, thank God someone's <laughs> awake. Um, <laughs> that's good. Got a lot of companies to remember. <laughs> exactly. There's a lot of companies. Um, and obviously there's a Tascam um, XLR support as well. Um, there's all sorts of ways that you can put audio into this. We've got mm. 3.5 input. Mm -hmm. um, we, I put splitters on it, so you can change it that way as well. Yep. You know, you can put, I have a mix pre-3 that I use on the bigger jobs. Yep. Put it on the back, just put a feed in. Yep. Uh, even the Zoom F3, if you're going small, there's a, there are many different ways that people do audio. I think everyone does audio in a different way. Luckily, there's no set set thing. I mean, they've all got so good now. Yeah. You know, they're like those that little white Rode Wireless Pro mm. is super popular at the moment because it offers time code. It offers, I mean, it wouldn't work with this time code. Um, that's the thing. We're going to start to see standard mm. clashes as more and more people adopt it. Um, but, you know, 32 bit float, all the rest of it. Um, and that Tascam unit, that's the same as the one that Canon are using, yes, right? Yes, it's, so it's the same product. That's right. You buy a thing you buy a Fujifilm version, you buy a Canon version. Yep. Abs abs absolutely. So, uh, so if you have to put more in, you can go that way as well. Sure. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, cool. Peter then, says he would love for that um, time code thing to be brought to the XH2S, which would be interesting. Well, Peter, I don't know whether it's hardware or. I software I'm thing. not going to say because I don't know. Mm. I'm going to. I'm I going think to, that's but, smart. I, but I like Peter's idea. <laughs> it would be that's great. A good it? idea. Would definitely, definitely. And then, really, at the end of it, uh, I just want to make the link between the cameras and the and and the professional lenses, yes. because uh, I think people sometimes don't realise, Premisters, Duvos, HZKs, yes, all of this glass that a lot of the films that we've enjoyed over the last 20, 30, 40 years has been Fujifilm and it so I get this with talking to customers mm. a lot sort of thing you 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 event you notice that they're a bit hesitant about wanting to talk about Fujifilm and try and dig out of them why and they sort of you get the they get you get the sense that they've got the impression that it's just a photography company that is no. trying to get into video a little bit and well, hang on, this is, this is Fuji. It's the same company as Fuji on lenses. You know, they, they, they do have, like you say there, a heritage. Yes, and it's great, I think, that we're getting bodies like the X-H2S, like this new GFX, yep. that are properly focused on filmmaking, that are serious about it. Um, 
and that will take those lenses. Now, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm quite... I realize that most of these lenses are higher only for for mere mortals like ourselves. Sure. You know, they're expensive. But that's what happens. You you have a camera system that works. You maybe have a PL adapter. You have a big job. You can hire a Promista, put it into Promista mode, this camera. Mm -hmm. You can film it. You can mm -hmm. you can make it work and you can use these lenses as well. And did you say that they'd announced that they were working on um, a lens with yes. a native GIF? Yeah, so at, at the X Summit, this just happened in Stockholm, where this camera was launched officially mm -hmm. um all we saw was a shadowy um you know sort of figure an outline of a Teases, lens eh? a teaser but there is an actual gf movie lens that's optimized um for movie making which i think shows the commitment to that mount yeah well and we camera wise you have to wait to see what it is yeah but exactly it's, it's a it, but it's nice if that, they are making something like yeah. that in in gf mount that's that's a that's a commitment yeah, it's exciting it's mm -hmm. exciting because I think what this platform does, we talked about it at the beginning, it's um, it's allowing us to do something that we couldn't do before, mm -hmm. which is to do large sensor filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, It's not been possible really before this camera. This mm -hmm. camera kind of blows the doors off that. I mean, it's been possible if you've got money to spend. Yeah, or but, crew uh, and crew. And crew. Well, it's <laughs> and been crew. But, but you even have, you know, you can turn up with a backpack and that in it, or yeah. you can carry on on a plane yeah. and you can now take that sensor around the world and do whatever it is you need to do. Send your footage back remotely from it. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's kind of slightly startling where we are. So the question I just wanted to end, I've saved mm. it, George, until the end. Um, George asked, Jim, what would be your fate, your ultimate setup for both photo and film on the GFX 100 Mark II. When you say ultimate setup, you're talking about lens or I rig? I think he's talking about rig, like like this kind of thing. I mean, this is the setup that you, this is something that you've built. This isn't something we've just chucked yeah, together no, when you've arrived is, this, this morning. Is, no, this is something that you I've this that built I've, out of your bag. I wanted something pre-built that I'm a, I'm a great believer in. So I've got a tilt and mirage, yes. which, is the, which is the ND at the front, just because it allows my ND just to run straight on a finger. Okay. Yes. Um, so that's the variable indeed. Because you variable can also indeed. put in I there. I can put in clear. I can clear, put in which promise. is a really affordable uh, way of doing it. It's actually nice. And what I like about it is that it has it has the mount on the front that actually holds the lens. So yes. It's on the bars. Yep. You know what I mean? That is a very cheap tilter, but it's actually really nice. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's very cheap. Uh, I've got more expensive follow focuses that don't actually feel as good as that. Mm. Um, I'm going to put a bar here and do motorized, so I can do it. You know maybe a, the tilter one or something like that do something yep. external so i can do that i do that on the run i've got this um slightly homemade but i'm very proud of it <laughs> off center top handle which of course allows me it is a i'm just looking at how that's put on that is that it's is proper. a little bit homemade no no it's proper <laughs> until someone makes something better it will do but it yep. allows me it does allow me to still use my evf as i want it yeah and i wasn't going to compromise that for and, and weirdly, if you have your top handle here, my, my balance is off axis. Yep. I've got to have it here. I mean, yep. normally I would, that's yours. I normally wouldn't have yep. that yep. there. Yep. I'd have it. That's to I'd send ha the menus. I'd over. have it built in down here. And then I worked out with this. I haven't even spoken about this. The, you know the fan attachment? Oh, yes. On the XH2S. Which you don't, for clarification, you don't have to use. No. That's no. only if you think you might run into overheating because of your location it or just anything like that. I mean, this camera, as a rule, does not overheat. We've mm -hmm. tried it. Um, but if you wanted to be safe, if you knew you were outdoors and you wanted the fan, it just slots straight in. Yeah. So you can put it in there and then you've still got this nice little screen here. I, I think I can actually probably hide some audio under here in this dead space. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's for another day. And then obviously wooden <laughs> camera, wooden camera uh, and just power because I can trickle because I'm trickle powering. I'm not doing a dummy battery anymore. So you're taking a USB-C mm. out of the, the V-Lock. You've yeah. got a small V-Lock on the back with the USB-C. Yeah, but it could be any so, brand. So yes, exactly. yeah, make exactly. those with USB-C. Um, absolutely. i got to show you one more thing. Mm -hmm. Can I show you one more thing? I mean, you can tell, stop me talking if, no? if, if I'm okay. getting dull. Um, <laughs> let me show you this, okay? Because I love this. Can you see that? Ah. All right. We haven't talked about this screen on the top at all because we've been focusing on no. the video rig. Let's talk about this screen so, on the top. So this is really fun. Do. So we've seen this on a lot of their other yeah. cameras where it's quite a small screen on the top. This one is huge. It's, it's actually a proper, <laughs> proper screen. You can see stuff. You can and have it two different ways. E I display, can have it that right? way or I can have it that way, which is probably slightly clearer for you. Mm. I can have all of my settings, okay, like this, mm -hmm. okay. Then I can say I'll have my digital dials, 
So uh, we, we're used to those. We've seen mm -hmm. those before. But the thing that I love is my exposure. So if I just play with, just quickly play with the aperture ring here. So you can see there, okay, as I just play around. But what's lovely about that is I don't have to go into a menu. I don't have to press a button. I don't have to do anything. I can, I can know holding it where I am. And crucially, your back screen is clear. Yes. Because yes. I'm, I'm forever. If I you want to use waveforms or anything like that, I have to be constantly turning mm. them on and off because I, I, I really dislike using a small yeah. screen on the back of a camera with something like that always and, up. And also, if you can imagine, often when you're filming someone, you're looking at them, mm -hmm. and whether you're looking down at the EVF or whether you're looking mm -hmm. down at your screen, I just, I just I've just got, I, I can have that clear. And I've just, but I've still got my exposure information. Yeah. Now, would I like that to be waveform? Of course. I would. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Fingers crossed. But it's histogram. And do you know what I did? I When I first got this, I took it out. I shot F-Log2, okay? Mm -hmm. And I basically made sure that my exposure didn't go into the top third. Mm -hmm. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. And I ran around shooting stuff. I came back, put it in the computer. It looked lovely. Mm -hmm. And I all I mm -hmm. used to, to literally do my exposure was that mm. that was my okay. that was my guide so i think if you learn to work with it it's still mm -hmm. a perfectly valid exposure tool but it's lovely mm. having it so big on that on that top plate it really makes it genuinely useful mm. um so yes just on overheating angry rabbit says he did see an overheat warning but kept rolling and it did not shut down that's i do the own the kind. fan but it was not connected and this happened on a really hot day well, that's great. So, good yeah. to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear. Um, For a camera with a sense of this size. Yes, well. I know. I, I mean, the People cooling... struggle on full frame cameras to not have them over. I mean, that's another thing to mention. Um, I don't. They've obviously done some very clever stuff with the body and the cooling. Mm. There isn't an audible fan. It's just naturally passively cooled. I yes, can't, I can't. True, there aren't fan exhausts no. out the back or anything, None. are there? Like the Panasonic NS1H or the no. R5C from so Canon. It's, it's totally silent. Yes. Um, three Interesting. programmable. Um, buttons on the top, so yes. function buttons, function buttons here. Obviously, you can function all of this lot and change all of those as well. Mm -hmm. Quick mm -hmm. menu there, mm -hmm. which you can have 8, 16, 32. Because I'm mm -hmm. old, I just need eight because mm -hmm. otherwise my tired eyes can't, can't, can't see too many, <laughs> too many boxes. Uh, and then you have your drive and just one control panel. And another thing I'm going to show, just if I may, is the speed with which it goes from video to stills. So I'm currently in... Um, I'm currently in video, okay? I'm now in stills. Oh. I'm back to video. So, oh, yes, it does reboot now back ever so slightly. So that's what, it's one second? Hot, what? Hot. I think Number you're under one. it. I think, yeah. I mean, one max, yeah. That is very quick. That, I think, is seriously cool. Yeah. So if you're doing stills and you need to do video or vice versa, you can literally jump. And, of course, when you change that, all of your presets change. So when I jump into stills, I have my C1 to C6 preset I world. Yep. When I go back into video, I have my C1 to C6 video presets. So it's a lovely way of jumping nice. six, six here, and six here. Can you record any video in stills mode? So with the, the toggle set to stills, can you put one of the custom buttons or something like that to be record a quick video clip? That's a wonderful idea. I haven't done it because okay. all I do is flick that button. Do you see? What, do you, you mean the ability to jump? To jump? So just I'm taking stills, but then just one button hit hit a quick video clip and then stop again. It's an interesting one. I, I don't know. I've not done it simply because mm. it's so quick. Yeah, you just haven't felt I the just need haven't to. Mm. Felt the need. The other, one thing that you can do, which is a bit nerdy, but I love, is let's say you're shooting 25 narrative, yep, and you suddenly want to do a bit of slow mo, yep. Okay, you can program C1 custom to be any of the function keys so if i made c1 100 frames mm -hmm. 2k i could then be filming you you get out a bottle of champagne that you want to open go into slow-mo film that go back to you in normal speed push of a button which is brilliant so in effect that's that, what you want that's giving you, you that high frame rate it's or, or, or it could be something else because you can program c1 to be whatever you want mm. do, you see what, do you see what i mean mm. in, in that sense so it's it's really adaptable really flexible mm. and no camera will be set the same you would set yours differently they would set theirs differently it would all be different mm. i think that's that's the nice thing about it it's kind of customizable can you save thing. settings to an sd card and you load can do back better up? than that you can do better than that and i had to do it the other day um i went like you i went i must save my settings how do i save my settings i, went, I don't need to save my settings 
because I sync with the app. Ah. The new X app. Oh, right. Okay, the app, it's like it? we planned this, but we didn't. It's come up organically. The new X app, you sync the camera. Mm -hmm. Let's say this is my master camera. Yep. Or let's say you rent one. Mm -hmm. You set it up how you want. You sync it with your app on your phone. That can go away, back to the rental house. Mm. When you rent it back or when you have six other bodies, you sync the camera with the app and download. Oh, and in really an instant, cool. they all have the same settings. I like that a lot. It's so quick. No mm. SD cards, no saving to a root file. of And no the, losing the SD card No either. losing it. And also in my phone then is my settings for my camera. Yep. And yep. if I'm abroad and I'm in America and I need to hire one, mm -hmm. I know that my UK settings can be placed on that body mm -hmm. in a matter of seconds, mm -hmm. as long as I change the frame rate. <laughs> but, but you know, but you know what I'm saying. Absolutely. And, that, and also, of course, That's the app. That's really clever. It is clever. It is clever. And of course, the app will give you live view, camera control. Why start, hasn't nobody stop. done that before? That just seems I found like it, I found it by accident. I've I never even be, imagined yeah. that. And yeah. as soon as you said that, I've gone, well, why doesn't everyone do it like that? It also that works. makes so much more sense. It also works on the XH2S. It mm. works on any of the Fuji cameras. Mm. It's one of the benefits of the brand new app mm. that's not been out very long. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, it's good. Now, I said I would end on George's previous um, question about the rig, but he's just put a better one in saying, oh, what is your favorite feature? George. That, oh, I mean, that is, okay. it's like, a, it's like George is a plant in the, in yeah. the audience. Or are they all questions. different? Are they different Georges? Is it George? No, one, it's one the to same ten? George. Wow. Okay. I would say, um, I, I hate to be boring, but that's my favorite feature. DVF. Because of what it allows me to do. I mean, I love the sensor and I love this and I love the 5.8 cine mode because the crop is so ridiculous and it's mm -hmm. so cinematic mm -hmm. and, and and i think i think it really shows off the adaptability of the sensor but if you if i'm going to be honest with you from a usability point it's that yeah because that means that i can run whatever lens i'm doing and i can get it in a carry-on bag and yeah. i can shoot and i can be supported i don't want to be here i want to be there okay. it makes such a difference in terms of stability for photo and for video, but especially mm. for filmmaking. Interesting. So that's my favourite thing. Very cool. Okay. Thank Fantastic. You. Right. Thank you very much for filling us in. I mean, I am desperate to borrow one and actually shoot on it. So let's definitely try let's and it. arrange that at some point very soon. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching and for your questions. Um, if you have any more questions, if you're watching this back after the fact, leave them down in the comment section. We're going to do our best to answer them. I'll pass them over to Jim for a bit of help sure. if um, we we struggle with any. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for that. That was really pleasure. good. Pleasure. Lovely to see you. Absolutely. Right. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye. Yeah, you better.
We are introducing the AWUE160. This is truly a groundbreaking PTZ. We have a newly developed 4K sensor, and this new sensor technology allows us the highest sensitivity within a PTZ on the market today. In addition, we're the first to introduce an optical low pass filter built into the PTZ. What we also did with the UE160 that's so revolutionary is that we completely redesigned the mechanism in which the PTZ moves. It's much smoother and much more accurate. I'm going